and gentlemen, hello and welcome along to part three in our class Zerion 12 development series. Already you may have seen part one and two. So in part one, we headed over to Germany to uh, Class's Paderborn facility and got to check out uh, some of the key component manufacturing for the new Zerion 12 series, not least how its tracks have developed and how they are built. Then we headed on down the road to Harzwinkel to get a little bit of Zerion history to kick off with and then we got stuck into it to see how this new Zerion 12 series is actually built. So now here you find us in part three, as promised, back at Saxon in the UK to actually get a first impression of this new Zerion 12 series. And to uh, sort of talk us through it, we have Mr. Patrick Frawley from uh, Class UK, who you may have seen at the end of uh, part two. But if you didn't see that, Patrick, just remind them of who you are. Yeah, so firstly, James, welcome to Class UK down at Saxon, our, our HQ here for the UK and Ireland. Um, but yeah, my job here at Class UK is product manager for large tractors. So everything 200 horsepower plus, obviously with the new Zarium, we're, we're really breaking new boundaries I was now. Say. Yeah, up to 650 horsepower, so it's made my job a little bit bigger for sure, but it's also made it a heck of a lot more enjoyable as well. Cool stuff. So coming up in this episode, like I said, we're going to get a first impression of this new tractor. We're going to get out in the field, in the cab, and uh, yeah, get some work done with it, which should be good. And while we do that, we're going to find out a lot more about it. But before we do that, firstly, we're going to get a little walk round of the new tractor uh, by Patrick. Uh, basically, Patrick's going to treat me as a potential customer. And believe it or not, and you better believe it because this is the truth. So if you saw episode two, when we were walking down the production line in Heiswinkel, this was the one we looked at. This was the number two Zarian 12 that was coming to the UK and now it is here so we've caught up with it so here it is so Patrick to kick off then just yeah explain what is in the Zarian family as it is today so I guess James really we've made the Zarian family bigger yeah we haven't replaced any models with this new 12 series so right 12, nothing's been kicked out nope it's only gotten bigger only getting to get in the doors of new customers, really. Right. So we've extended the range on the top end a little bit. So if you looked at Zarian that we already know and love from the last 25 to 27 years, yeah. we already have our 4,200, 4,500, and 5,000 machines. Yeah. And they come in a range of horsepowers from 460 at the bottom end with the 4,200 up to 530. Right. And they are the machines that we still know as our multi-purpose vehicles with the reverse drive option, the saddle track as the tool carrier, and then the center mounted cab. As so well. they are your systems tractor, you exactly. might say. Right. Yeah. And in, for this one, the new Zarian 12 series, this doesn't get that, does it? This is in another segment altogether, you might say. So this is what we're calling our Zarian Terra Track. So right. a, a sort of a fourth model, if that kind of makes sense. So essentially for the UK and Irish markets, we are only going to have the tracked version. Yes. We're not going to be selling the wheeled version here in the UK. So in terms of models for the UK, it's the 12.650 as the top model at yep. 653 horsepower and 3,100 Newton meters of torque at the flywheel. And then in terms of the slightly smaller sister model, it's 12.590 at 590 horsepower. Right. The machine is also, as it stands at the moment, 25.5 tonne. That's without any extra ballast That's on? Without any additional ballast. Right. That would be for jobs like high speed tillage or drilling or these kind of things. If you're then going down the speed range into heavy drafts. So she's in sport mode. At the it bottom. is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can obviously then ballast the machine yeah. right up to 28.7 tonne if we yeah. need to. So you have a lot of flexibility. That's right. a key part of Zarian DNA that's still strong in the 12 series. So the fact that we have a rigid frame, it gives us a lot more flexibility in terms of where we can position components within the chassis yeah. and then also add weight on top of that chassis as that's well. That's it. So you'd remember from episode two when we were looking around the development of the machine, yeah. you actually would have noticed that the engine is linked to the gearbox with a drive shaft. Yes. That gives us the ability to position the engine independent of the gearbox to control the weight distribution of the machine. Yeah. So when we're pulling, under draft, whether it's high speed tillage or heavy lugging, we want 50-50 weight distribution from the front to the rear. Yeah, because once it's under draft load. Correct, yes. Yeah. So it's sitting a little bit nose heavy as it stands. Yeah, 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 with no load on the back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When we then get into those heavy draft applications, we've also got ballast that we can add onto the front. So we can start by putting an 1800 kilo block onto the front directly. From there then we would recommend to then add on another 400 kilos over the front. 
So that can go on top of that one. Yep. Right. And then from there, then if we're then still needing a little bit more weight, we have another. If that's not enough. <laughs> we can then add on the ton weight over the back that you can see just sitting in between the two models. All right, so you just see the little lugs pointing up. Correct. And it just sits on top of that. Yep. Right. So that's a ton you can put up there. Exactly. Cool, good stuff. Right. Uh, so we'll start with what's under that monster of a bonnet that you can play a team sport on. The rugby pitch of a bonnet. The rugby yeah. pitch of a bonnet, yeah. <laughs> so what we have, it's a very well-known engine within class. We already use it in our Jaguar harvesters. It's a 15.6 litre straight six engine from Mercedes. Right. Once we then come through the flywheel of the engine, we then look at the pump transfer gearbox. That's that right, we saw, we saw that. We saw that being built in Paderborn in episode one. Yep. And we saw where it was assembled and located in episode two. So yep. go check those two episodes out if you haven't seen them, because it sits about there. Just in front of the cat, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then coming out of the pump transfer gearbox, then we go into our CMATIC transmission in the heart of the machine. So our yes. CVT, CMATIC transmission. And the key benefit to this now, similar to the engine, that transmission is standardized across the entire Zarian family. So that's what you're already using in the Zarian family. Yep. So you've not had to come up with a brand new gearbox nope. for this. Nope. And the reason why we can do that with the higher horsepower and the bigger torque is because of that pump transfer gearbox that we put in front of it. Right, there you go. So that speeds up the engine output going into the gearbox. Correct. Yeah. There you go. In simple terms, we have high speed, low torque in the gearbox. Yeah. But once we get to the track units, we have low speed, high torque. Once we get down here, it's all been multiplied again, exactly. torque wise. Yep. Speed has obviously been reduced. Mm -hmm. And then once we get to here, if you remember the magic number from the previous two episodes, which was, go on Patrick, what is it? 100,000 Newton meters per track. So 400,000 in total. So back end then, we get to the back of the tractor. What are you offering in terms of, obviously you've got lift capacities, mm -hmm. draw bars, hydraulic pump capacities, number of spools, what have you got? Yeah, we've got a few different bits and pieces to kind of tailor to different customers and different requirements. Um, I suppose firstly, the machine comes standard on category four draw bars, but we can go up to category five or ball hitches if we need to. Um, we have two pump options. All the higher pump option going up to 450 litres per minute if we need it. Big numbers with this machine. Big numbers, it? big, big numbers. By having the overcapacity pump, we can keep the RPM of the engine lower, which increases the efficiency of the machine. Yeah, that's, that's it. the logic. Simples. And then number of spools, what can you have on here? So up to six, really. On up the to suit. six. Yep. Right. Yep. <laughs> so we move on around. Well, well, we'll just come back to tracks because obviously we talked a heck of a lot about tracks in episode one. Mm -hmm. Their heritage, how they've evolved and how we've arrived at this new triangle track yep. uh, design. But just talk us through a couple of maybe unique selling points of this, for sure. this track design. So I guess for us, really the unique, major unique part about the track units that we have on our triangle systems is the dampening system that we have on board. Yeah. And essentially what this rubber silent block is doing is it's carrying the front idler. And that's the same on all four corners. So if you'd imagine maybe a nice, say maybe on the street, mm. if you're hitting a speed bump, this front idler is always the first one to catch it, yeah. but it's a dampened system by the rubber silent block, so it takes out that aggressive knock. Takes out a big shot load. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. And that then is obviously not being transferred into the spine of the guy in the seat. So again, real key focus on sort of maintenance wear tear costs in this machine. Yeah. Simple little features that I think Sebastian pointed out during the first episode was like fill and empty points on all of the idlers, mm. clear caps as well to make maintenance nice and easy. All of the tractor is auto greased as standard. All of it. Except for one grease point on each track unit right. and the rear linkage. That's it. Yeah. Give you something to do. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, belt options on this then. So really for the UK, we're only offering 760 millimeter belts because it keeps us within three meters. We are standard on the call it normal duty belts, if that makes sense. Right. As an option, we have the HD belts available on okay. the configurator. But really when it comes to your triangular track systems and how we see these systems working, we don't need the HD belts really until we're going into the real slow, heavy draft applications. Right. You will see some colored machines on the market having the HD belts as standard. Yeah. The reason being, and the reason why we don't need it is down to our drive idler. Right. So we have the largest amount of contact to the belt with our drive idler. We have eight and a half lugs mm. interlocking at any one time. If you look at certain colored machines on the market, you might see two or three less than that. Right, yeah. as much as that. Yeah. And when you look at those HD belts, it's only making the difference on these drive lugs underneath. It's more sort of, I suppose, uh, harder canvas, if yeah, that yeah. makes sense, on those drive lugs. So they're offering that as standard. 
effectively, you might say, because they need it. Yep. That has an impact of over £10,000 on the retail price of the machine. Right, so we talked uh, about uh, the, sort of the comfort gains you get out of this track, the little bit of comfort gains. Uh, what we're doing for comfort up there. So four point cap suspension, again, kind of unique in this horsepower segment as well. Again, something that we've known and loved from our Le Mans or French built tractors yeah. uh, for the last 20 plus years. So I think you are famous for the four point cap suspension. It works right? well, it, yeah. James. Don't, don't fix it if it's not broken. Yeah, good. Other little things in terms of comfort as well. So proper integrated toolboxes. So you have a grease gun holder underneath here. We have our toolbox integrated as well, airline as well. So again, it's all thought about and made right. easy to live with. So you've got it covered. Yep. So you've got toolbox there, hand toolbox wash, there. Hand and hand wash as well, yeah. right? Hand washing station. There you go, good stuff. Well, Patrick, uh, I think that is enough chit chat, isn't it, really? I think it's I time think to it's, get to the exciting stuff. It is, it's what we've actually all come for. It's what you've come for. It's certainly what I've come for. Uh, I'll not lie, I've already had a quick play with this while we're in Germany, but we're going to have a proper play with it out in the field uh, in the UK, in some UK conditions, so it should be good. And that is up next, ladies and gents. <laughs>